plus on miniaturise, plus les composantes électroniques à base de silicium atteignent leurs limites. Ils dégagent trop de chaleur. L'équipe de Thomas Kopek a montré que le phosphore noir pourrait alors remplacer avantageusement le silicium pour les transistors qu'on retrouve par millions dans les puces de nos ordinateurs et appareils portables. One of the biggest challenges uh, in electronics is uh, energy efficiency. Uh, we all have electronics at home and our portable devices, and we are concerned uh, with how long, for example, our batteries last. Uh, this has been a challenge that uh, people have been thinking about for half century or even longer. In order to improve the energy efficiency of electronics, we have to improve the energy efficiency of transistors, and that can only be achieved by changing the fundamental mechanisms by which the transistors work and the materials that make up those transistors. In our recent discovery with black phosphorus, we've discovered a material that we can prepare in ultra-thin layers, so thin that there are only a few atomic layers thick. This allows us to force our electrons to move in a two-dimensional fashion. That is to say, they can move about in the plane, but they cannot move up and down. This turns out to be exactly what's needed for energy-efficient transistors, whether they're conventional transistors that we already have, or new kinds of transistors that people are thinking about. In our work, we prepared black phosphorus transistors, and we made measurements of the resistance of our black phosphorus transistors in the presence of a magnetic field. And this really gives us information about how the electrons move through our materials and devices. What are they bumping into as they travel along the device? And how are they moving? Are they moving in two dimensions or three? These are very fundamental questions that we address by using cryogenics to access a very wide range of temperatures and also uh, superconducting magnets to be able to apply large magnetic fields to our devices. Predicting the future is very difficult. So we may be tempted to think that we have black phosphorus in all our electronics 10 years from now, but there are still many uh, challenges to be overcome and many other discoveries that probably are lying in wait for us. So it's truly difficult to tell. Definitely we have to uh, keep pursuing this, uh, this line of inquiry, whether it's black phosphorus or not. This grand challenge of improving the energy efficiency of electronics has to be addressed in our society.